Sean writes, hi guys, why isn't James Spader in more things? This guy is a god. Just <laughs> watching him in The Blacklist gives me goosebumps. He is an unbelievable actor and him as Ultron was the most perfect decision anyone has ever made. He should be in every <laughs> film, yet he isn't. Why is that? As he clearly has amazing talent. I remember a few months ago I had the, I, I don't cover a lot of junkets anymore because I'm not just not into junkets, but Age of Ultron, I wanted to go and cover that one. So I did, and I remember my my favorite memory of that one, besides my interview with Chris Evans and Chris Hemsworth, which is, if you saw it, you know I'll always remember that one. But it was Scott, I got to sit down with James Spader. And I'm a big fan of the TV show The Blacklist. This guy's voice is one of the best voices in the business right now. Because we're sitting down, and first of all, he's every bit as classy as you imagine he is. He's wearing this dynamite suit when I went in and sat down with him. And he's so composed. And he starts talking about his daughter playing Nintendo, right? And even though he's just talking about his kid playing a video game system, it felt like he was talking about international espionage. Mm -hmm. You know, my daughter. I'm not even going to try to do his voice, but his voice is so freaking good in the way he carries himself and conducts himself. He's great. He actually did this really cool film that stuck with me. I watched it when I was a kid. I thought it was so cool when I was a kid just because there were boobies in it. But honestly, as I revisit the film, it's actually a great film. Remember that film, Crash? Oh, I he love did, Crash. Not the Crash, the one that won Best Picture at the Academy Awards. It's a David Cronenberg's Crash. Yes, and he, like that film he was in, he was great. That one he did with Maggie Gyllenhaal, the secretary. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, secretary. Yeah. Also Fantastic. Also had boobies, but when you watch the film, it's just a brilliant, brilliant film. But you got to remember a couple things. Number one, James Spader's a little bit busy these days. He's got this hit show called The Blacklist, which you can, you know, that's him playing one of my favorite characters on TV right now in, in Red. Uh, so he's got that going on. Secondly, it's like the Brian Cranston situation. I remember when Breaking Bad was ending, I was had these debates with friends of mine, and they say, oh, Brian Cranston's about to be a big major star. He's going to be an A-list star across the board. And it's like, no, he's, he's a great actor, but there's not a lot of leading roles out right now that are going to call for, for his type of an actor. There's just not. James Spader's the same thing. He's not going to headline the latest romantic comedy. You know, he's, he's not going to be the lead in Gambit. So the amount of roles that are going to be available to, to him are unfortunate, uh, unfortunately a little bit limited, but you can bet that when he is in those films, he's going to knock it out of the park. But I think for the most part right now, it's just a matter of he's, he's got a family. He's real busy with this TV show that is a big hit right now. TV shows are on for a limited amount of time, so he's riding that for as much as he can right now. So I think that's why you probably don't see him in a lot more stuff on screen than we do. And Christian, how do you interpret it? I agree with you, and it's just that voice, strings, like everything about, like everything he <laughs> you, you does. You do a much better James Spader than me. <laughs> but he does. He just has that. He's got that smoothness to him. And and when you guys mentioned Secretary, by the way, what you should have said is the real movie version of Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah, right. yeah um, true. And he he's just elevates. He's one of those guys. I'd like to see him have a career somewhat to what the, like the resurgence of uh, Michael Keaton or mm. J.K. Simmons, like doing roles like that. But but you're absolutely right. Like, especially on an on a network show, those are a lot of episodes, man. That's a lot of time. So when he goes and does something like Ultron, it, it's smart. It's like it's a big, huge Marvel movie. It's gonna. It's probably a nice paycheck. He's gonna. He's gonna. You know, be in. It's gonna get his face out there more. It's gonna make more people watch his television show. So he's got to be able to pick and choose at this point because he's going to be so busy on that show. I think that you will because this show is such a hit that maybe in the downtime, maybe you'll maybe he that's when he shot Ultron was during the downtime of Blacklist. He'll probably pop up in something else. But I agree with you, by the way. Um, I forget the kid's name who wrote the email, but I Sean Sean. I agree with Sean. I want to see him more because he is one of those guys. Like even like uh, the great oh my god, my, Michael Caine uh, pops up. In, Older, obviously, but pops right. up in so much stuff, a lot, all the time. Even if he's just in Kingsman. I want to see Spader do stuff like that. I, that those are the types of roles. He's not going to carry a movie, right, but he right. can elevate anything that he's in. Well, I think he's been he's been in so many movies, starting with Sex Lies and Videotape. You know, that was like Soderbergh's right. first film. Right. That's his big film. And then he was in a lot of other films, including Crash. I mean, he, he, it's not like he ever disappeared off the map and then he got, you know, he's out of somebody dusted him off to be Ultron. <laughs> he's always been around. It's just now more people know about him because of Ultron. That's really the re it's the reverse. It's right. like it's like he was he's never was in a giant hit movie. He would take 
and pick selectively really kind of like off the wall and kind of strange films. And he's a great actor. He's a great character actor. So I think him taking on the blacklist and doing Ultron only means we'll get more people getting a, an awareness of him saying he's underrated, meaning he's going to get more roles. So I think we'll see him popping up in great character roles for a long time. And coming. television has been very, very good to James Spader. I, I honestly think my favorite James Spader stuff out of all those movies, whatever. First of all, he's won three a Best Actor uh, Primetime Emmy Awards, all for playing the, the same character over two different shows. Mm -hmm. uh, he played this one character, this lawyer in The Practice, and then that character got his own spinoff show, Boston Legal, that he did with the great William Shatner, who, and then William Shatner won a bunch of Emmys for that as well. And I remember that show, Boston Legal, that one of my favorite, my favorite part of that show, they ended the show almost every episode the same way. Out on the balcony, if you will, of this high-rise, powerful office building, two chairs and a bottle of bourbon. And the show would always end with William Shatner and James Spader sitting at night on those chairs overlooking the city over a bottle of bourbon and then having the scene between the two of them that would last anywhere between five and 10 minutes. And those were always the most fascinating. That's the key of a great performer, man. Just put them in a chair talking to another great performer and you're glued to the screen. And when they did that, I was always glued to it. Spader's got a great history with television, especially in the last 10, 15 years. He's very comfortable with television. Like you were pointing out, this is network. This ain't like HBO or Dexter or like Game of Thrones where I get to go, I got 10 episodes right. to shoot. You got 22 episodes. Right. You and not like Netflix where they shoot it They shoot it all with one one shot, like one big long movie, and then you're done. This is like weeks and weeks yeah, and weeks. Yeah, so he's busy, He's and he's totally successful right now. When he wants to do more movies, they won't be the big leading roles, unfortunately, except for, unless it's a good political one or whatever. But like Michael Caine, that's a great illustration for a career path he can well, do. Well, I also want to make sure that we address the commenters who are going crazy right now. Yes, we are very aware that he did Stargate. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're hyper aware of that. We're yeah. not, so that's the one that everyone knows. Right. Yeah. 